after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending immense greetings and salutations upon the final Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. We find in a world whereby many people may live in a state of loss of despair or have no hope. And you find in the world around us so many individuals that this hope or this lack of hope or loss makes them even take their own lives thinking there's no way out of the extreme difficulty or the hardship, the pain, the suffering that they're going through. And for some people at times there may even be something trivial that makes them lose hope. Whereas Islam gives that individual that hope, that conviction at the end of if there is suffering upon this earth there's going to be some goodness. Or if the individual has overcome, overwhelmed themselves with ma'asi, with disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they're trying to repent or to turn back, there's hope for those individuals. Because the wider world around us, that some of us we look and think that maybe the grass is green on the other side or the world is bright on the other side, just to help us to understand glimpses of what these people, the sufferings, that what it leads them to enter inside their lives. In the year 2022, rounding off to nearest hand, we find approximately 65,000 people committed suicide in the United States of America. 1.2 million people attempted suicide. Close to 65,000 people committed suicide. In this country, we find close to 6,500 or 6,300 people carried out suicide. And that's why studies and millions or billions are being spent to study how to find the balance of the human being. Whereas we have the Quran, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't kill yourselves, don't commit suicide. Indeed, your Lord is merciful towards you. That we have this faith and this conviction that no matter what we've done inside our lives, or what happens inside our life, there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there at the end of the journey who looks at the intent of the human being. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَى صُورِكُمْ وَلَا إِلَى أَجْسَامِكُمْ Allah doesn't, or وَلَا إِلَى أَجْسَادِكُمْ Allah doesn't look at your, your, your physical depiction or your images. But rather find the hadith, it continues to mention وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَنْظُرُ إِلَى قُلُوبِكُمْ But Allah subhanahu looks into your hearts to see what your heart contains. Not to say that we shouldn't be worried about external format or display of the Muslim because that is, many ulama mentions, is a reflection of the heart. But it's a deeper journey of the individual. As Ibrahim alayhi mentioned that the person successful on the day of judgment, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ That day your wealth and your children will not avail you. إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Except for the person who comes with a sound heart, a pure heart. Also the discussions at Surah Qaf speaking about the 50th chapter of the Quran speaking about death. <coughs> Those who come with a pure, with a sound heart will be told to enter, enter into paradise, the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this deliverance that we find that Islam grants or gives to us. And this verse that we're going to specifically focus on gives that deliverance to the believing individuals. Imam Ali mentioned, مَا فِي الْقُرْآنِ آيَةَ أَوْسَى مِنْ هَذِي الْآيَةَ There's no more encompassing verse inside the Qur'an than this verse inside the surah that we're going to mention. As Imam Qurtu bin Arayt said, his tafsir. He also mentions, Abdullah ibn Umar said, وَهَذِي الْآيَةَ أَرْجَى آيَةَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ This is the, the ayah full of the most greatest hope. The greatest ayah of hope. That's why we find normally so many ayat that we may reflect inside our lives. أَعْضَمُ الْآيَةَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ The greatest ayah inside the Qur'an is ayat al-kursi. So this is the greatest ayah of giving person hope, deliverance, rescuing oneself. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, إِنْ أَكْثَرْ هَذَا آيَةَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ فَرْحًا Fi Surah Al-Ghuraf is another name of this surah of Zumar. The most rejoicing verse inside the Quran. This is the verse that we should rejoice when we recite this verse. Imam Shawkani said, وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ هَذِي الْآيَةِ أَرْجَ آيَةَ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ That this is the verse that contains the most greatest hope for the believers, individuals. لِشْتِمَالِهَا عَلَىٰ أَعْضَمْ بَشَارًا Because when it contains the greatest of glad tidings which are given to the believing individuals. And this all helps us to understand that this journey that we're trying to pluck single verses or parts of verses from the Qur'an. Why are we doing this? To see that they are just single verses or segments of verses inside the Qur'an 
that should have a profound effect upon us. And this verse from Surah Zumar, the 39th chapter of the Quran, verse number 53. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَغْفِرُ ذُنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ Say to my by believing servants, الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ That have gone beyond the limits. They oppress themselves. لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Don't despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Allah forgives all sins. إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's so why you can understand now why the companions and the ulama they mentioned this is the most ayah full of hope that we don't lose hope no matter what we've done inside our lives. As we know that the ending is bil khawatim. It's the end of a man that counts. The end journey. Just like in the beginning, innamal bin niyat. It's the intention you intend right in the beginning. And somewhere in the middle, we all waver, we all falter, we all default. We may all even go off the path at times. It's the end result. إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ عَلَى الْخَوَاتِيمِ What was the final nail in the coffin of the individual? What was the ending of the individual? That's what stands and counts. Because that is tawfiq min Allah. That's a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he, he changes a person. This is more excessive. That we find that ulama mentioned there's more chance of a person changing from bad to good. A person of good, normally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves them. Very rarely a person moves something from something bad to into something, something good into something bad. But a common practice is the opposite because Allah is ghafoor rahim. Specifically to the Muslims that he gives them opportunities to move towards the haram, towards the halal. And grants them many opportunities. Opportunity of, after opportunity. As if there is a, there's some goodness in the heart of every single one of us. In every single one there's a goodness and Allah is, is playing in, inside our hearts to make that goodness come out of us. That we invoke, invoke Him, we implore Him, we ask Him and we, and we end our lives in the words and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this verse in the end of Surah Al-Zumar, the other name is Surah Al-Ghuraf, that we mentioned as zumar is the troops, the groups of people, this 39th verse of the Quran, the most the Holy Spirit is speaking about Al-Akhirah, about a journey inside Al-Akhirah and speak about the groups of the people who seek al kafaru ila jahannama zumara. When a disbelieving individual is brought in troops, in groups, brought to Jahannam. And then the opposite is there. Wa seek al taqaw rabbahum ila jannati zumara. That's the sunnah of the Quran. Whenever it speaks about the hellfire, yukhawifukum, scares you, it gives you the glad tidings of the opposite. Or Allah begins with glad tidings and speaks about if you went off the path, this is what the punishment you could be facing. And the main theme of this surah, of surah Zumar that we find is ibadah, is worship. Worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fa'budillah mukhlis allahu deen. Right in the beginning Allah mentioned that worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make your deen sincere, devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some three different verse, similar verses inside the same surah remind us about sincerity of ibadah towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to become the ibad, to become the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the same surah, Allah mentions, Ya ibadi fattaqoon. That's why pluck out inside this surah how many times Allah speaks about ibadah, about worship, about His servants. Ya ibadi fattaqoon. Oh, my servants fear me. Again, inside this surah, Allah mentions, Fabashir ibad. Give glad tidings to my servants. What glad tidings should we give to these individuals? الَّذِينَ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقَوْلَ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ أَحْسَنَهُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقَوْلَ الْإِسْتِمَاعَ أَشَدْ مِنَ السَّمْعِ Those who pay, pay deep attention, focus on the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقَوْلَ Meaning that they begin to listen to the words and they try to implement وَيَتَّبِعُونَ أَحْسَنَهُ And they try their best. So this Quran recited, like we heard that many people marvel at beautiful voices, maqamat and changing of tones, etc. and weeping, whatever. We're not saying there's something wrong with that. But it's not just weeping over the Quran. Sometimes it's good to weep over the Quran. 
But as Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned that the real weeping is a weeping of the heart. The weeping of the heart that leads to what? Al-amal, to action, to obedience, a ta'a. That's when you know that there's an impact of the Qur'an inside our lives. That externally at times we may weep over the, the emotional reading of the Qur'an. So the 29 or 30 odd days that we've been listening to the Qur'an, now that should spill over. The heart should be filled. It should be a vessel that's flowing with the Qur'an. That where am, where am I from these words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? الَّذِينَ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقَوْلَ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ أَحْسَنَهُ Those who hear these verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and live by them according to the best of ability. And inside the end of Surah Al-Araf, Allah mentions again that believers are those individuals who pay, وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ When the Qur'an is recited, don't just become silent about the Qur'an. Pay attention to the Qur'an. That you may attain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise in the same surah, الَّذِينَ أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِكَافٍ عَبْدَهُ Is not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sufficient for his servants? أَنْتَ تَحْكُمُ بَيْنَ عِبَادِكَ فِي مَا كَانُوا فِي يَخْتَلِفُونَ You judge amongst your servants in that which they diff differed upon themselves. بَلِ اللَّهَ فَعْبُدْ وَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ Worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and show gratitude. Throughout the Qur'an, Allah speaks about what is worship. Worship is actually shukr. That is one of the meanings of ibadah. And tashkur lillah. That you give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In kuntum iyahu ta'budun. That if you really do worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you give shukr. You give gratitude. You give praise, remembrance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that praise isn't just in certain, certain moments. That inside the prayer is one form of shukr and gratitude. وَلَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا تَصْنَعُونَ And the greatest thing is the dhikr of Allah. Allah said dhikr Allah هنا بمعنى الصلاة. The greatest way to give shukr and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is as-salah. To remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whilst we're standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we find that before this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned before this verse, أَوَلَمْ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّ اللَّهِ يَبْسُطُ الرِّزْقَ رِزْقَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَقْدِرْ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتِ لِقَوْمِ يُؤْمِنُونَ Don't you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expands the risk, the sustenance for, for whomever, he, whomever he wants. وَيَقْدِرُ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ وَيَقْدِرُ and, and gives a due estimate or due decree for every single individual. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتِ لِقَوْمِ يُؤْمِنُونَ And that is signs for the believers to reflect. So prior to this verse, Allah is speaking about worldly materialistic gain. That's what some of the ulama are mentioning that here is speaking about your materialistic needs. Allah is the one that provides them. And then after this, Allah then speaks about the spiritual gain. That just like for your material gain, Allah provides it and you turn to Him. Then for your spiritual gaining, also turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because after this, Allah mentions, وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَى رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ Return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ and submit to him. Min qabli yatiyakum al-adabu thumma la tunsarun. Then all of a sudden, the, the punishment comes upon you and victory is not given to you. And then again it's mentioned that it comes upon you baghtatan. All of a sudden, death comes upon you. The end of your life comes upon you. And then a the person says, oh, oh my Lord, now let me come back. Likewise, it's like Surah Al-Mu'minun. Allah mentioned exactly the same, same thing. That a pe person will say, Rabbir ji'oon, la'alli a'amalu salihan fi ma tirat, kalla, innaha kalimatun huwa qailuha. Person say, oh my Lord, give me respite, let me go back to this dunya. For what purpose? La'alli a'amalu salihan fi ma tirat. So I can go back in this dunya, gain some more wealth, gain some more recognition, Gain things of this dunya? La. La'alli a'malu salihan. So I may go and do some righteous actions. Kalla innaha kalimatun huwa qailuha. These are just vain, empty words. That's what the response is. These are empty words. Wa min wara'im barzakhun ila yawmi yub'athun. Min wara'im doesn't mean from behind. It means min amamihim. In front and there's a barzakh. 
There's an interspace. Now you're, you're locked in an interspace. Once you leave this dunya, فَإِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُلْقُومِ when your soul comes right to the top part of your throat. Allah says now bring the soul back now. When it's leaving and it's about to go. If you have the ability, return the soul. تَرْجِعُونَهَا إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Bring the soul back into this body if you're truthful. That's why there's no tawbah. There's no repentance for a person when, they, when their soul comes right to the top of their throat. And they see سَكَرَاتُ mawt. They see the pangs of death. They see the angel of death standing there in the corner walking towards them to take them. They try to flee. The soul flees within the body trying to escape it. But closer it walks towards the individual to take them, to snatch them out. Baghdatan. Take out their soul. That's for every single individual. For some soul it will be just a soft pushing Squeezing like the, the Arabs have the flask, the drinking casket that they have, the pouch that they have, swat, the soft touching and the soul just plummets out. And for others it will be just dragged out because it doesn't want to leave the body. It's so attached to this body, to this dunya. But there's that barzakh, you can't return back now. That we're all going too long. In another place I saw the munafiqun, Allah mentioned. person is going to say, let me come down to this earth. Give me the chance to come and spend my money. You know this money I was hoarding and collecting and chasing after all my life? Person is going to say, let me come to this dunya now and spend it. Inside Surah Tawbah, Allah mentioned that the money is going to be branded. You know like you brand a horse in this dunya, you, you brand it. It's branded, it's burnt on its skin to mark it. It's the property of someone, so it's a stallion horse, stallion camel, stammel Stallion property, the gold and the silver that we hoard, it will be heated and melted and be stamped on our bodies. This is the treasures that you try to pile up inside this dunya. That if it doesn't benefit, benefit inside this dunya, it's going to lead you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you find that re returning back to making tawbah ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Tabri inside his tafsir he mentions one the possible reasons of sending down of this verse. That some of them they mentioned, the mushrikeen they mentioned that they've excelled in, in killing, carrying out of zina, doing all types of haram things. And he said, it's, it's good what you're telling us, all this reward and whatever's going to take place. But we want to hear something a bit more. And nalana tawbah, it's going to be tawbah given to us. So then this verse was sent down for Bashir Ibad. Also this was. Then this verse was sent down. Oh, my servants who, who've gone, ex, gone beyond the limits. There's forgiveness of Allah upon you. And likewise, the end of Surah Al-Furqan was sent down as well. Other ulama like Imam Qurtubi mentions, This ayah was sent down regarding Muslims who went beyond the limits. And uh, Imam Qurtubi also mentions, ayah is speaking about wahshi. Qatil Hamza, Wahshi, the person who took the spear and killed Hamza. Because later inside his life he became Muslim. But he felt he forget, felt regret, remorse. And he said, the only reason why I killed Hamza was to get my own freedom. So in a battle, he, he picked up his in battle Uhud, he picked up his spear and he said, I just followed Hamza wherever Hamza was just to slay him, so I could get my own freedom. And we know that the Prophet didn't want to see his face because the way he killed his, his, his uncle. So he thought that maybe there's going to be no re repentance for the action that I've done. But Allah says that when a person inside Surah Al-Furqan, whether you've killed a person, you've done all types of atrocities, murdered someone, done haram inside your life, as long as you don't commit shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then all, all these sins will be wiped out by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's there's numerous verses inside the Quran which are similar to this verse. وَإِنِّي لَغَفَارُ لِمَنْ تَابَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا ثُمَّ اهْتَدَى وَإِنِّي لَغَفَارُ Indeed Allah, I am the one who forgives, who pardons. For whoever who repents, وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا Who believes and carries out righteous actions, ثُمَّ اهْتَدَى And remains steadfast upon that. Ibn Kathir mentions, أَلَمْ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ 
هو يقبل التوبة عن عباده ويعفو عن السيئات Do you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one who accepts the tawbah of his servants and he wipes out their sins. وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا أَوْ يَظْلِمْ نَفْسَهُ Whoever oppresses oneself or carries out evil actions ثُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرِ اللَّهُ Then the person seeks the forgiveness of Allah يَجِدِ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا You'll find that Allah is the most merciful, the most forgiving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Kathir then mentions another verse from the Qur'an from Surah Tawbah أَفَلَا يَتُوبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَهُ Why don't they repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek His forgiveness? وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ قُلْ Imam Sa'd inside his tafsir mentions قُلْ Say, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Say to the people and any individual who is in a position of preaching to the people give people glad tidings as well give them good tidings and as we mentioned many times, when we're not here to have a go at people or to make people feel bad or to make people remorseful. We're here also to give glad tidings. That in that remorse that we awaken ourselves. That's why Imam Sa'd inside his tafsir mentions that not just the messenger, any individual who's preaching, always, always encourage people, people come. Don't give people to lose hope as we began with. Give them hope that no matter what you've done, you're still breathing, you're still living. There's going to be the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ibadi. And this khitab, as Imam Tabri mentions, very rare inside the Quran when Allah speaks, Ya ibadi, my, my servants. Even inside the same verse, in the same verse, it mentions, Qul Ya ibadi ladina amanu taku rabbakum, without the Ya. And Imam Tabri begins to discuss it, why it comes with the Ya or without the Ya. But we find this, this rare inside the Quran. Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultanun. When shaitan is trying to make his traps upon the human being, Allah says, Inna ibadi. My selected servants that I've selected and chosen, you're going to have no power over these individuals. So that's why we have to find who these servants are. Just like in the end of Surah Al-Furqan, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ الْعَرْضِ هَوْنَا هُوَ عِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ find the, find the traits, the characteristics of becoming the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Tafsir al wasit it mentions, when Allah is saying, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِي التَّشْرِيف وَالتَّكْرِيمِ is honoring these servants, that even if they've done wrong inside their lives, Allah this isn't saying, oh you sinners, oh you oppressors, oh you bad Muslims, oh you bad Muslim, oh fajir, oh fasiq, oh rebellious one, oh wicked one. Allah is saying, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِي O oh, my servants, these servants of mine who've gone beyond the limits, who've done what? الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا أَسْرَفُوا means to become excessive, to go beyond the limitations. When Allah mentions that Surah Al-Araf, خُذُوا زِينَتَكُمْ إِنْدَ كُلِّ مَسْجِدْ وَكُلُوا وَاشْرَبُوا وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا O son of Adam, take your beautification when you come to the masjid, dress well. Present yourself well in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا Eat and drink. وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا Don't become excessive. And that's inside some of the tafasir it mentions about وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا Isn't just speaking about the wasting of, of, of food that we find. وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا بِمَعْنَى فِي اِقْتُرَافَ الْمَعَاصِي وَالسَّيِّئَاتِ That you have excessive food, drink and excessive money. What does it normally lead to? الْمَعَاصِي It leads to disobedience. Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tajawaz al had fi kulli shay. To go beyond the limits in anything inside our lives. So those who've gone beyond the limits that we feel that we've sinned so much. Asrafu ala anfusihim. That we've sinned upon our own self. Ala anfusihim. That this harm is upon ourselves. That's a zulm. What is zulm? Zulm is oppression upon your own self. Every time I sin, it's detrimental to my own self. Every time a person sins, a black dot comes on the heart of the individual. A black dot. The more you sin, the more the heart deadens, hardens. It becomes some element becomes rusty based upon the verse that Surah Al-Mutafifin. Kalla bal rana ala qulubihim bima kanu yaksibun. Kalla bal rana. This ran comes upon their, their heart. That the goodness doesn't penetrate into their hearts. 
That's why Yawmul Jum'ah that we find a person who misses three Jum'ahs in a row. Allah seals that person's heart. Their heart is sealed. That's why we should be worried that if we can't make it to Jum'ah or can't come to Salah, come to good things, we should be worried that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blocking my avenues to come to Him. And I need to unlock those avenues. I need to find ways. Just like in, in, at work, you're, you're troubled at work. Your manager doesn't give you time off. Or there's people around you make comments, whatever it may be. What do you do as a human being? You change your environment. You change your lifestyle. You change your friends. You may even change your family members. Because it's detrimental to you. Detrimental to your dunya. Why don't we think it's detrimental to our akhirah? Do we ever think that in our lives? This is detrimental to my akhirah. It's a prevention of me coming close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we find that this zulm is on our own selves. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِمَانُهُمْ بِظُلْمٍ Allah mentions that the Quran, those in the video, real believers, آمَنُوا believe, and they never oppress their own souls. So the companions took this literally. They said, all of us, we commit sin, so none of us is going to be successful. None of us is going to be successful. And this comes the role of the Prophet ﷺ, to explain to them that the zulm inside this ayah is speaking about the greatest zulm. What is the greatest zulm that a person can commit inside their life? A shirk billah. As Luqman said to his son in Surah Luqman, Inna shirka la zulmun azim. When he taught, his son gave him advice. He begins by telling his son the first thing. Ya bunayya la tushrik billah. My son, no matter what happens inside your life, never ever associate partners with Allah. Then he gives him the other commandments. Order the good, forbid the evil, establish the prayer. Wa la tamshi fil ardi maraha. Don't walk in a state of arrogance on the earth. Don't raise your voice. Lower your voice, be a humble person, all the rest of the traits. But the first lesson is what? Don't commit shirk billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Imam Tabri said his tafsir, he mentions those individuals, ala anfusi means shirk was sayyat. That these people have deadened their hearts with shirk and disobedience towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then comes the glad tidings. La taqnatu. Don't despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fala taqum min al qanitin. As Allah speaks inside, speaking in Surah Hijr about Ibrahim alayhi salam, don't become like these people as we began, don't lose hope. A Muslim should never ever lose hope inside their life. That's the message inside this surah. La taqnatu from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some tafsir mentions, Yashmal ahlul ma'asi min al Muslimin. And this is specific te- specifically speaking about Muslims who don't wrong, wrong things inside their life. La taqnatu mi rahmatillah, don't despair from the mercy of Allah. Allah mentioned twice inside the same surah. Kataba ala nafsihi rahma. Allah has written upon himself to be merciful. And again, Allah mentioned, Kataba rabbukum ala nafsihi rahma. Your Lord has written upon himself to be merciful. In another place in the Quran, Inna rahmati wasi'at kulla shay. The mercy of Allah encompasses everything. Inna rahmat Allah qaribun minal muhsineen. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to those doers of good. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins jami'an. That's why some of the ulama begin to dissect and have a study about jami'an. What does it mean? It means every single sin, even shirk. If the person doesn't die upon it, they repent before that. Even that will be wiped out by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here Imam Tabri highlights the hidden meaning of these verses. Is to take the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. Allah forgives all sins of those people who take the path of repentance. That's Ibn Kathir inside his tafsir mentioned this verse is speaking, coming towards ila tawbah wal inaba. To make tawbah and returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he mentioned no individual should despair from the mercy of Allah. Wa in adhumat dhunubahu wa kathurat. No matter how much the sins of the person may be. How excessive they may be, they shouldn't lose hope. And he mentioned that the verse that we mentioned previously, أَفَلَا يَتُوبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَهُ In the towards the end of Surah Al-Maidah, I'm not mistaken. 
or inside the end of Surah al Tawbah, or Surah Al Ma'idah, sorry, Allah mentions the context. Ibn Kathir mentions the context to speak about those people who committed shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, as if Allah is saying that as long as you repent back to me, then Allah will forgive you your sins. And then he touches upon the hadith of the person who killed 99 people. Just gives a, a deep mention, a, re, a very single mention about it. But Imam Baghawi inside his tafsir, he mentions the whole hadith, the whole journey of the person who killed 99 people. But he still felt remorseful. He, he asked the people, what should I do? They said, go to this righteous person. Maybe he might be able to, to help you. So he approached a righteous person like many of us who claim to be righteous people. So he asked the person, Halli min tawbatin, is there any tawbah for me? The man said, there's no tawbah for you, person like you. How is there tawbah for you? A person who killed 99 people, you expect to be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in his frustration, what did he do? فَقَتَلَهُ He killed him as well. Made it 100. Still felt remorseful and he asked the people, what should I do? They said to him, go to the alim, go to a scholar. هُنَا نَرَى الْفَضْلُ الْعَالِمَ عَلَى الْعُبَّادِ The virtue of a scholar over the masses of people. Go to him, go and ask this individual. So when he comes to this individual, this scholar has farasa understanding of the society around him. That's what many of us, we don't have that. So we just give black and white answers to people. Halal, haram, that's it, this, that and the other. That's not a faqih. That's not a jurist. That's not a scholar who doesn't know his people. He said to him, simply, إِنَّهَا أَرْضُ You're surrounded by bad people. Wicked people. Bad comrades. Not a good society. You need to make the exodus, make the hijra, leave these people, walk away from these people. That's what you need to do. So he makes his resolution to leave these people. And as he go, tries to go towards the new land, look how strange Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to teach us a lesson. On his way to the new land, he dies. He dies. The angels of punishment, wrath, anger, they come. And he said, this individual killed 99 people, he killed another individual. He doesn't deserve to go anywhere except for to be doomed to the hellfire. The angels of mercy come and say, no. He's on his journey to the new land. He's changing his life, his career, his intention. He needs to go to paradise. So they begin to dispute amongst one another. So Allah sends another angel either in the disguise or another angel comes to become... A judge in his dispute amongst these two angels. So this angel says, let us measure where this individual is inside his life. If he's close to the new land, he goes to paradise. If he's close to the old land, take him to the hellfire. They begin to measure the footsteps. Footstep, hand span. They find him by one hand span or one arm's length. That is closer to the new land. And some hadith mentioned that the land is he stretched to be closer to the new land. That's what some ulama mentioned. The key ingredient inside this hadith is not just his tawbah. It's his ikhlas. It's his sincerity that he wanted to repent. So Allah dragged him closer to the new land. So they measured, they found him closer to the new land. So the angels of mercy, they took him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Innahu huwa al-ghafoor rahim Innahu. Ta'kid, Ad-Damir, Innahu, Ya'ud ilallah, Innahu, Huwa, Al-Ghafoor Rahim. As if for emphasis, that indeed, He is the only one who forgives and pardons, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other places in the Quran, I mentioned, Wa Rabbun Ghafoor. Your Lord is one who pardons, who forgives. And in Kathir inside his tafsir, he mentioned that if you did not sin, then Allah would bring people who would sin. And they repent back to him. That's what Allah mentions that Surah Tawbah in the, inside Surah Al-Baqarah verse 222. Inna Allah yuhibbu wa yuhibbu Allah loves those people who make Tawbah to him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then somebody mentioned kafara to dhamb and nadama. The kafara of your, of your sin is to feel that remorse. But the more authentic hadith in Surah Ibn Majah 
إن الندم هو التوبة. To feel remorse, regret about your life, that is Tawbah. Just to sit there, just to reflect upon what that is Tawbah in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not like in today's society, that's why this, this media world at the moment, you know what the dangers of the media world at the moment is? That every time you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you've displayed it, you've made a reel, you made a video, you made a TikTok, whatever it may be, and you displayed it, that this is what you've done to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you try to turn back. But where has gone viral of what you've been doing inside your life? That's the dangers of, the, of media that we fail to understand. Even our Muslim sisters that we find the way they dress, the way they conduct themselves, what they send out and they show. And now they want to change their lives. They try to blot it all out. It's all there. It's all viral. The type of person, the type of life that you are, the type of person you are. So that's why don't, be, don't get worried then when people make comments about you. Because you've, you've lived that life. Because before, people used to earn sin. But they kept it to themselves. That's what Allah mentions inside the hadith. It mentions that my servants, they sin by day. And Allah forgives them in the evening. And some servants, they sin by night. And in the morning, Allah forgives them. Kullu ummati mu'afa. In a hadith, it mentions all of my ummah will be forgiven. All of my ummah will be forgiven. Except for whom? Illa al-mujahireen. Except for those who boast about their sins. Those who display and show their sins inside society, they will not be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a final note that we find not to judge other people, because you find that Abu Huraira anhu, narrates this hadith about two individuals who are arguing amongst one another. One person is pestering, as we find inside a society, the person may be doing something wrong and saying to the person, you're doing this wrong. This is haram. This isn't right. Then again, the second day, this isn't right what you're doing. Then the third day. And the person doing wrong knows that they're doing wrong. It's just maybe a matter of time for them to find that journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Says to the person, Abasta alayya raqiban. Are you once sent as a watcher over me? Are you a watcher over me? That's what some of us are. We're just so engrossed with other people that we, that we lose focus about our own selves. Look at the Quran speaks. Ata'murunan nasa bil birri wa tansawna anfusakum wa antum tatluna al kitab afala ta'qilun. Do you order other people to do goodness and you don't do it yourself? That's this overzealousness of always trying to correct other people, to change other people without paying, paying enough attention upon their own self is detrimental to one's own iman, one's faith. So this person says to his friend, Have you been sent as a watcher over me? So he, the friend responds, and says to him that you're never going to be forgiven. Allah will not forgive you. There's no way Allah is going to forgive you. You sin like this, you do these actions, Allah is not going to forgive you. So now when they both die, what happens to these two individuals? Allah says that this individual who did carry out these sins, and wanted to make that change, and wanted to come in the right direction. Allah says that I've forgiven this individual. And as for the one who thought that he's a watcher over him, who done these good deeds, then his deeds have been nullified. And this individual, may Allah forbid, has been thrown inside the hellfire. And as we find in conclusion, that what does Islam do? Just as we began with, Al-Islam, يَجُبُ ma qablahu. Islam wipes out everything that existed before in a person's life. So the more that we try to exert in our practice of Islam, it wipes out every single thing that we do inside our lives. With the sincere tawbah, and obedience towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika li man yasha. Never associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He forgives every sin except for this abominable sin. And likewise we mentioned never lose hope. Never despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ensure us all his mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout our lives on his blessed day, on the first day of Shawwal, the day of Eid, that Allah subhanahu wa mercy stays with us throughout this year, throughout our lives, throughout our moments, to be mercy of Allah subhanahu wa inside our graves, on the day of the mahshar, on the gathering, on the day of come standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa and Allah covers us with his mercy on that day when we stand there and changes our bad deeds into good deeds. That is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa that we should all hope and aspire for with that journey in trying to make these small efforts upon this dunya.